guys welcome to deadly departed it's been a while since i've been on and for that i apologize but as you can see i've been waiting on my new office setup uh not quite there yet but we're getting there so what are we going to talk about today we're going to talk about meeting your guides and the reality of meeting your guides and how easy is it to meet your guides and also is it really your guides you're meeting so when we come right back, we're going to talk about that. I'm going to dive into it. And I'm going to, I'm going to actually tell you something that you might not know and something that is skipped over in any mediumship development uh, to do with guides. Uh, and it might shock you and uh, it might annoy you a little bit. But at the end of the day, it's going to educate you in the right way to meet and connect with your spirit team. God bless. Okay guys, welcome back. So as promised, we're going to dive right into this whole thing about meeting guides and the desperation for guides. But first of all, guys, for those of you that have joined recently, thank you so very much for joining. If you haven't uh, subscribed to the channel and you've just landed here, then please subscribe. It helps to support uh, the work that I'm doing and the education that I put out there. And also, if you really, really like what we're doing and you, you follow what we're doing, then you'll find the link to come and join our private group as well, uh, and that will be below. So, let me just jump into it because I don't want to. I don't want to waste time because this is this is quite uh, exciting for some people. It might annoy some other people, but there's a whole thing about having a guide. Okay, everybody has a guide. We talk about angels. I'm not going into the arguments about the wheres and the whys and the wherefores, but. When people are meeting their guides or they're, they're, they're trying to work with a spirit team or work with guides, 98% or not even 99% of the time, people will take you through a guided meditation to meet your guides. And that is okay in a certain way. I mean, but you have no guarantee that it is actually your guide. Why? Because there's a desperation in you to connect with someone, to connect with a guide. And the reality is, is that your perception or your desperation to do this and part of your ego will conjure up what you think is a guide, whether it be a Native American, an Egyptian, a Chinese guy. There's so many of them. And the reality is, you know, developing mediumship or developing your spirituality and spiritual growth it doesn't really matter what a guide is what a guide is called. It doesn't really matter. The more important thing is not your guide. The important thing is you and your development. Um, and the thing is, is that you can be duped. I've I've got another video you'll see up here. I've linked to another video. How danger you know that there's a danger about spirit guides as well. I would advise you to watch it. And then there's another video which I'm going to link up here. Uh, and, and that's about uh, spirit guides and how we recognize and how discern, you know, discern the spirit guides and um, what they actually are, okay? So, here's the thing. When people are looking to work with a guide and they have a desperation work with a guide, they tend to go through this meditative process, right? Meditation. I, I've got an, another lesson coming up on this, but... The meditation, the guided meditation to meet your spirit guide. And that can only work to a certain extent because you are going to get in the way, right? Just like a medium can get in the way of the message, you're also going to get into the way of that divide, that guide connecting with you because most of the time what you're conjuring in your mind or what you're seeing clairvoyantly in your mind can also be coming from your ego and it can be coming from your desires and your need to have that connection. So the reality is, is that when you're doing a guided meditation to do this, or you're doing a guided meditation to perhaps connect with the, your guide, or you know, even for your loved ones, you're training your mind. Is is the reality? Is what you're doing is you're training your mind, okay? And you're not necessarily communing with spirit. Even when you do a guided meditation and you get a little bit of insight, or you see a loved one. Um, that's all very well and good because you're training your mind to do that and you're needing, you're getting that compassion, you're getting that comfort from it. And part of you will conjure this unless you get evidence. And I've always said this, you need three, three levels of evidence you, you know, from your guides to make sure it's your right, you know, the right guides there. Um, 
And so most people don't get that evidence. So there's, there's, there's a chance that they're actually conjuring that or they're creating that from their own ego or their own desires from within it. There's nothing wrong with that. But most of the time when people actually get communion from the other side in a, in a guided meditation, there is a reason for it. And that communion is very short-lived, um, but there is some kind of evidential connection there that you're able to um, verify and, and legitimize that connection. But nine times out of 10, when people are first developing their mediumship or developing their spirituality, they're desperate to work with guides. And they're so consumed with these guides being either famous people or you know a, a Native American, a famous Native American, and really it doesn't matter. Your, your guide could be a coal man from down the road or a refuse collector who you know years and years ago has passed over. It doesn't necessarily matter the label that we give them. But the reality is if you want to connect with a spirit guide and to develop that relationship, you do it in a way that I like to call communing with spirit. It's, it's basically sitting with spirit, raising your vibration to a certain level where you don't think of nothing. You don't allow um, uh, stimuli from external ways of, of, of you know, music and, and guidance to be able to take you to that point. Because there is, a, as I said, there's a danger there and that you will conjure what you want to. The way to do this is to develop your inner power, to develop your divine connection, to develop your divine discernment. And to basically sit and commune with spirit in your energy and invite. After obviously you've done your protection process and everything else, you need to learn to sit in the silence. Because it's sitting in the silence and raising your vibration in the silence which is a long-term uh, development process. It's not just about sitting a few times in meditation and getting yourself there. Sitting in the silence is when you connect with the divine. That is when your spirit guides can come forward. And you may be sitting in the silence for a long time. But as your spirit guide or your spirit team comes forward and makes themselves aware to you, you will start to develop that relationship that you can build upon. You see how I nearly lost my teeth there? And building upon it will be getting certain forms of evidence, learning you know, elements of discernment to be able to identify that it is the right spirit and it is definitely a guide of the highest order. And like I've said before, and I think I've recorded a video on that as well, just saying a prayer to protect yourself is often not enough because your vibration may be vibrating at a different rate than you think. So it's a continual process of developing yourself. So when, when you're making that connection and you're raising up in silence, you, you raise your vibration, you're in the silence and communing, in communion with spirit, in communion with the spirit forces, that is when you'll actually get that real connection. That's when your spirit team, your spirit guides can make themselves aware and you can start to develop that relationship. So you can see how Training your mind is different to actually communing with spirit. And some people will call it sitting in the power. Whatever it is, whatever you label it, it's communing with spirit. It's blending your mind, your body, and your soul as one and elevating it to a level where you can get that communion and they can make themselves aware to you. Okay, That's very important. So when you're going through a guided meditation, like I said, yes, sometimes you can get a connection but it will, it will give, there'll be some form of evidence that'll come with it. But mainly when you're doing a guided meditation, you're training your mind, you're training yourself to get into a meditative state. You're training your, your, uh, your mind to be, you know, to get in harmony with divine forces and to quieten your, yourself. Okay. So, that is really the, the, the way that you will meet your guides and be guaranteed to really start to build a real relationship up with these, with these divine beings on the other side. It is in the silence, it's not in the, the, the visual guided meditative process because your desire and your desperation will conjure what it is you think or what it is you are. And here's the other thing. Nobody can really tell you who your guide is either. A medium cannot tell you who your guide is. 
unless they've got some really damn good evidence that they can give you that that's the person. I've seen it so many times when mediums just label somebody and say, this is your guide. And somebody will say, oh yeah, well I did think it was Egyptian because I felt like that. That's not enough evidence. That's not evidence, okay? Sit with spirit, commune with spirit, develop your relationship over a period of time, develop over a long period of time. It took me years and years and years to, to learn to work with my spirit team. It wasn't instant. It, it, I, and I, you know, I went down the realms of self-gratification thinking that I had, you know, uh, this spiritual divine guide and, and labeling them. And I made the mistake of going into guided meditations to meet my guide and stuff like that. But I've learned over the years that that's really not the way that we do it. That's how we train our mind. And that's how we get ourselves into that rhythm of learning uh, meditative techniques and learning to raise our vibration on an easier form. But the greatest way to develop that relationship with, power, with, with spirit is to sit and commune with, with, with spirit. Sit and commune with divine forces that are within you and external to you, obviously using your power of discernment. So when you do both, do your meditations, your guided meditations to train yourself, to get yourself to that level, but also sit in the silence because in the silence is when you're going to touch the void of divinity. It's when you're going to be able to be uh, approachable from the other side and our loved ones, those in spirit, will be able to connect with us in the silence of divine power. Guys, if you've got any question, please uh, ask below. Tell me what your thoughts are below. Uh, I'm glad to be back. Um, also, if you want to ask any questions privately, Follow me at Spiritual Medium on uh, Instagram and I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, I might not get back straight away, but I definitely will get back to you. There's no doubt about it. Okay, guys, God bless. Have a wonderful evening. Stay safe wherever you are in the world and develop safely. See you soon.